Of the two You Should Play videos I've put out, the game has either been one that I've heard of but haven't gotten around to playing until then, or something that I've followed for some time and played at release. In the case of Mundown, a horror game from one man developer who goes by Hidden Fields, I literally stumbled across it when looking at upcoming titles for the Waxer Report and was immediately intrigued by the creepy atmosphere the trailer gave off. When the title launched on March 16th, I decided I had to check it out for myself and see just what on earth Mundown is and if you should play it. Mundan is a first person horror game set in the titular valley in the Alps. You play as Curtin, who once lived in the valley with his grandfather and are returning after having learned of his tragic death in a barn fire. When you arrive, you discover that he remains unburied and is instead bound to the burned barn by a curse. It's from there that you begin to investigate the town and surrounding area in an effort to lift the curse. Without spoiling the story, it is admittedly on the side of predictable and not entirely original. But its writing, characters, and use of flashbacks make it an interesting ride through its 8 hours. Something I'll say outright about Mundown is that, when it comes to the horror aspect, if you go into this title expecting to be scared constantly, you'll be sorely disappointed. What Mundown goes for instead of outright scares is to instill the player with a sense of unknowing dread as you explore the beautifully hand-drawn landscapes. Whether it be mirrors that envision you as a transformed demon, pictures that, when stared at, audibly replay the scene in which they are taken, or elongated and claustrophobic hallways with combination of an anxiety-inducing score that make you second-guess what might be at the end. Speaking of music, the sound design in Mundown is truly stellar, often being pivotal in combination with what's going on on screen, creating truly dreadful or even sometimes peaceful and serene moments. My favorite of which is actually when you're searching for a bunker at night and the entire area is filled with these monk chants that guide you to where you need to be. The gameplay for Mundown is actually reminiscent of older horror titles, focusing heavily on exploration in order for you to complete the list of objectives that lie in your journal. In the mid section of the game, however, this means that you'll be checking back and forth across the section, or even to previous sections, which is admittedly repetitive due to the areas in the game being rather large and even further frustrating in combination with the relatively slow movement speed. This isn't to say that exploration is bad, as doing so helps you stumble across important supplies like coffee which helps you stay sane, as well as pitchforks, matches, and rifle ammo which are all used for combat. And speaking of combat, unfortunately it is the weakest link. There are only a few enemy types within the game, which include giant strawmen, killer beekeepers, undead soldiers, and a yeti? I'm gonna go with yeti. Of the four enemy types, however, only two of them can actually be directly combated. The zombies can be fought with your granddad's rifle, which is so unsteady that it's just easier to run away whenever a firefight occurs. The strawmen can either be stunned by pitchforks, which are not only awkward to figure out the distance needed to hit them with, but also require a charge before thrusting it at the creatures, can be set ablaze when standing near piles of hay, or ran over, which works just as fine too. Bees, which for me were some of the most annoying enemies in the game, can be overcome by either running away from them before they can swarm you, puffing on a tobacco filled pipe if they do swarm you, or dressing up in a beekeeper suit for a limited time until Curtin can't breathe and has to take it off. And as for the Yeti, well, it's just best to leave it alone. The game is also very easy. My playthrough was on normal, which is the base difficulty before it's even revealed that there is a way to change it. And I only ended up dying three times, twice to being surrounded by more strawmen than a Ben Shapiro debate, while the third was due to the annoyingly bloodthirsty bees. Overall, Mundan is an experience that I found to be very enjoyable, despite certainly being flawed. In spite of its familiarity, the story was entertaining from start to finish thanks to its solid writing and characters. I can certainly see a few things I've mentioned being a total turnoff from the game, whether it's the back and forth exploration, its focus on slow burning horror, or the not so great combat. But as a game that's not only developed by one person and only priced at $20, I certainly recommend it if it does sound up your alley. This has been Waxo, and until next time, take it easy.